And so now I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Dimitri Diek de Gallo. That's right. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, building a custom model field from the ground up. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Cool. So I'm Dimitri, and I'm working at Kiwi.com as a technical team lead. I'm located in Prague, Czech Republic. I do Python Pro 2010. I co-maintain a couple of open source projects like Django Money, and I love open source and traveling. So uh, who use custom model fields? Could you raise your hands? Nice. Who tried to build your own? Cool. <laughs> OK, so basically, why do we need it? First use case is when we need to map some custom database types into Python objects. And the other way around, store some complex Python objects in the database. So it's two ways interaction. And the, there is a use case for it. Uh, the project is called Django Money. It provides you money and currency objects and integrates uh, everything into Django ORM. Also, it has forms, admin integration, template tags, Django REST framework integration, currency rates, stuff like this. This project is kind of mature. It was uh, started in 2011 as a fork of another project. I started to committing to it in 2013, and I used it in my previous job. I started to maintain it a couple of, couple of years ago, and the interesting fact is that there are two maintainers here on the conference, and I first time meet Benjamin here after six years of uh, working together on the project. Okay. A little overview of the topics that we will cover today. First of all, we will inspect the storage level, how to map money to model, what are the queries underneath, how descriptors could help you. Then we will make some queries. Uh, we'll try to look up API and introduce some expressions. And some extras like migrations, serialization, validation, stuff like this. So, let's go for storage. In our domain, we have money. Basically, it consists of two things, amount and currency, and we can use it like this. So we have money, amount, currency, we have decimal and string. Also, we can use some arithmetics, like addition, subtraction, some other operation. Uh, also, we can localize the representation, depending on the locale uh, we want to use. And I have a question for you. Who use decimal or numeric type for storing money? Floating point types? Couple of integers? OK. Uh, I believe that the preferred way is to use decimal or numeric. Uh, for storing it, because otherwise you could face uh, precision loss it's in most of the cases. So we need to map these to our beautiful model. Because, for example, we have item to, to buy, and we have simple name and our new money field. So I would recommend to start always with designing the interface of how you would use your new field. So basically, we need some basic operations, create, get, update. It's, it could be done in different ways, but there are some examples in the code. So save, get, some F is safe and refreshing. No complex queries yet. And I really recommend you to make the test cases from, from these expectations from your interface. Just just like this. Or you can use <coughs> built-in Django test cases or use PyTest, whatever you think will fit here. So on the storage level, we can 
we can approach in different ways. For example, we can store data in different fields, as we do in Django Money, which is not really good in all cases. So it's standard SQL, and unfortunately, uh, managing two fields at once is not trivial in all cases. I will show you some examples of the consequences of such decisions. Okay, how can we connect it to the database? We have our money, and we need to store amount in the decimal field and currency in the char field, and underlying data types in the database are numeric and varchar. So, and how we would do it on the Python level? There is a nice, nice thing called descriptors, and basically it allows you to customize attribute access. So get, set, or delete, you can customize these things, actually. And in our case, we need to build a money instance when we're getting something from the field. And we need to set another field when we are setting something to this price field. So, for this purpose, we can utilize contri uh, contribute to class and add also this currency field there. But does it seem hacky to you? Who thinks that it's hacky approach? Yes. Uh, there is a nice alternative uh, called structure type. It's uh, from SQL 1999, I believe. Uh, and it implies the usual way of implementing custom fields because it's much easier to map one field from database to one field in Django. In Postgres, you can, for example, create type Django money as amount and currency of certain types. Uh, and the queries will be a bit different. So you need to utilize brackets a little bit more. But surprisingly, it's not supported by MySQL. I believe 20 years is not enough. So, and also you would have some overhead for attribute access because you need to get the uh, tuple with the data and then uh, extract uh, some field from the uh, structure type. But however, it could be mitigated with using indexes. In the worst case, for example, in sequential scan, you will have to uh, evaluate the condition for each row, but for index-only scan, we'll get everything from the index. So there are some ways to mitigate it. And how we can implement these two ways communication? Um, my, um, <clears throat> in Django, fields provide you with a couple of different uh, methods, and we need basically two of them from DB value, and here we need to construct the money instance from some DB level string or other object. And get prep value, we need to construct database level instances. And a little disclaimer, uh, some examples are a little bit sloppy um, because there are no like corner cases and maybe some error validation, but I would like to emphasize that it's only like core actions that you need to make. And also there are many other places to extend. These are the basic ones. So for the first part, the summary is design the interface first and use it as a test cases. Discover your database queries because you need to map Python to database. You need to know both sides. Decide on your database support. If you really need to be database agnostic, or maybe you work on Postgres and you're happy with it, up to you. And one field is simpler than multiple fields, on, on Django level at least. Try structure types for composite values. It's a cool feature. Okay, let's, let's make some queries. Uh, basically, we can make some lookups, transforms, use some expressions, like we need to have some items that price is greater than 10 euros, or only Danish crowns 
as a currency, or maybe only amount more than 100, or price is equal to some other field. Define your behavior unambiguously, first of all, and inspect your database queries again. So basically, these lookups and transforms could, be, could look like this on the database level. You will need this transformation a bit uh, later. So uh, I believe from Django 1.8, uh, there is a lookup API that really, really cool thing. Um, you need to basically define your lookup and register it with register lookup. It's, it's here. So basically, what you need to do is to uh, emit some SQL and some parameters for your uh, queries on the database level. There are a lot of existing lookups that you can reuse. However, the base thing is that you need some SQL as an output. So you need to construct left side, right side, and parameters. For transforms, like extracting some certain subfields from the structure type, you can utilize a similar thing called transform. You need to, again, create some uh, SQL as an output and have some output field. For amount, it's decimal field, and for currency, it's char field, basically. If you will go this way, a uh, basic expression should work out of the box. For example, here we have some number of items, and values and annotate works just out of the box. Maybe some order by and some other simple uh, expressions. But if you need to use something more sophisticated with F expressions, for example, you need to extend your domain because it's not aware of Django at all. So uh, here, with money, we have magic methods for addition, subtraction, and so on. So we need to add a knowledge of expressions from Django like it is an example. So also you need to adapt your lookup implementation because it's also not aware yet about the uh, expressions, so you need to handle it as well. And for structure types, you could create, for example, your own expressions, like subcolumn or something similar, and use it like this to make some custom queries. So create custom expressions if needed. The summary for the uh, querying part is pretty much the same. You need to define your lookups, transforms, and behavior unambiguously. You need to know your database queries and map these Python things to database things. Use lookup API to build desired queries it's really nice too. Uh, we started the project when it was like Django 1.3, 4, and there are a lot of different hacks to uh, like uh, have the same behavior. So I really recommend to use lookup API instead. Extend magic methods on your domain entities to uh, for uh, F expression support and create custom expressions for your structured types if you need it. Okay, extras. Uh, at some point, you might need to migrate your data. So migrations. Uh, for this case, you need to, first of all, extend the construct method on the class of your field. In this case, you will have your custom options in migrations. Also, your domain entities are not aware about migrations. You could use the constructible decorator to add this support. So if you want to have some default value like this, you need to wrap your domain entities in this decorator. <clears throat> Serialization. 
So maybe you would like to use fixtures or something like this. Uh, you need to define, uh, you, you need to have a module with two things, a serializer class and deserializer, deserializer callable. And for example, this implementation hooks in value from field. And for our custom uh, structure type, we emit a dictionary that contains these uh, nested fields. And yeah, here is the result, nested field. Okay, for deserialization support, we need to update our get prep value because in this case we will have a dictionary. So update it and it will work. After it, we need to register our uh, serialization module. Uh, and the good place is um, app config. So basically you can define default app config and in this case, ready will be uh, fired after, uh, in, in some time when um, Django initializes. At some point you would like to, maybe you would like to validate your fields somehow, like uh, set some minimum values, some maximum for different currencies, something like this. And Django provides you with a lot of tools already built like validators for minimum values, maximum values, you need to extend it a little bit to work with your domain instances. In this case, we have like different uh, boundaries for uh, amount and for certain uh, currencies. So you can define anything you, you want. A bad example of um, consequences of uh, some decisions, like having two different fields and working through the uh, through. Mm, huh. descriptors. descriptors, right. Uh, is this because we need to, in Django Mine, we need to uh, hook some modules. We need to update um, some functions inside in runtime, it's really, really hacky and like, I would not recommend to do it ever. But it was like six years ago, we didn't have like, many options like lookup API and stuff like this. But for structure types, it will work out of the box. Okay, so the summary for the third part. Extend existing tools from Django, there are a lot of them, really. Validators, serializers, migrations, everything is there, but you need to extend it in certain points. Use application config to, regis uh, to register your uh, extensions. Think about possible use cases for your field. Maybe you don't need ser serialization or something like this. Okay, and summary for the talk. Always start with the interface design first. You need to know what you would like, what, what you expect from your uh, custom field and use it for your test. <coughs> Explore underlying database queries because it's really important because you need to map two worlds, Python and databases. Experiment with your implementation. Choose the most simple and unambiguous and try to evaluate possible consequences of chosen approach because we have like maybe 70% of the code that works only for uh, supporting new things like uh, lookup API and similar behavior that is in Django from some point. But we went another way and we need to have a lot of hacks for it. So Django provides you with a lot of extendable tools for mapping your domain entities to the database. Use them. It's all I have. Thank you very much. Questions. Awesome. We have about six minutes for questions. That means we can do about 
three, four questions. Um, just a reminder that you can do it online uh, with DjangoCon QA uh, hashtag and the IRC channel. Great thought, thanks. Um, uh, structured types uh, is new to me. Um, I'm sorry if I missed it, but uh, is the, what was the approach you took for um, creating a structured type via a Django migration? Once again, please. Creating a structured type via a Django migration. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Uh, you need to run this skill. Like uh, I had an example, create type, name of the type as some structure. It would work. I uh, see. So put that in run SQL migration. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. Maybe in some newer Django versions, it could be supported. I don't know. Another question about migrations. Uh, you mentioned the uh, uh, the construct that is needed for creating the field type, but did you also need to make uh, special migration operations to add? Sp specific migration operations to support your field type? And uh, if so, uh, how did you go about that? Uh, OK. Basically, it depends on the database. Uh, I believe that in Postgres, you still have alter type stuff like this. However, I'm not sure about the others. But in general case, yes, you need to define your extension for some alter field or something like this. Basically, it's probably the most uh, frequent use case, I believe. So yes. And, uh, and when you def do define these sort of uh, operations, then the Django um, auto-migration creator will not use them, will not detect you them. Need, yes. yeah, yeah. You need so, to use it manually. As far as I know, maybe something changed. Oh. I didn't know about this, that you can reg uh, register a custom, uh, your serializer with Django. Do you know if it's also picked up by the Django REST framework? Uh, I don't know. It, if it's in Django and currently, for example, in Django Money, we uh, basically we replace JSON serializer with our own to add this support. So it should be used because it's in Django. Okay. But for Django REST framework, you probably need a little bit more, uh, like not regarding ser serialization, but like having support for this type of fields in serializers, for example. OK, so. thanks. <coughs> Any other questions, please? Questions online? Oh, we have someone come in. Um, hi. What do you oh. think about um, using a JSON field if you have more than like two things to store? Yes, uh, JSON is a bit different. However, I think it could be used. Uh, there is no decimal in JSON standard, right? It's only floating point. So for this exact use case, I wouldn't recommend to use it because of the precision loss by default. Mm -hmm. Or you can use string maybe and wrap it somehow so it could be used, yes, as an option. But I don't know about the performance issues or stuff like this. It could be similar, most probably. Hey, um, oh. I'm wondering if you can use like um, the um, aggregate functions like sum and average and all of that uh, using like the fields. Does it work? Like, uh, I believe only like count stuff, it, it will work out of the box, but for average you still need to extract amount part out of it. And in plain SQL it will be average of the square brackets dot amount, for example. Yeah. So you need to um, compile this SQL. So basically you need to extend a little bit these aggregates okay. to, Thanks. to have a support for it.
Isn't we have it, time for about one uh, more question. Isn't it a little bit uh, redundant? Normally you have one row in the database and everything is, is in the same currency. So isn't it a bit redundant okay. to always keep that? And that's another answer to the question before, if you do aggregates, mm -hmm. you don't want to sum up, let's say, Danish krona and uh, mm -hmm. euros together because it doesn't make any sense. It, it depends on the use case. For example, uh, I usually work with card transactions, for example, for these payments, and mm -hmm. we store different currencies, and we need to aggregate by different currency. So uh, I would say uh, it's more in implementation-wise, because uh, having two fields is a bit more complex than having one field. It's only, always an option. It's a trade-off. You have a little bit of simpler implementation but you have like limited database support and maybe some performance uh, downgrade. So it's things to consider for your use case. It, you always need to consider all these factors. But in some cases, it could help to reduce some complexity from your code. In some cases, not. So in your case, you have sometimes uh, a row with a lot of different amounts and different currencies. Uh, I would say that we have different amounts on the same row. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, I mean like different monies. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh